should play with the gypsies in the wood. If I did, she surely say, naughty lad to disobey. They call us the wild ones. The pilgrims of the mist. Romanes, gypsies, didicais, mumpers, travellers. Nomads of the road. Black-faced diddies. Of course, where gypsies were dark, they call us carboshes, black people. Ganger old buddies. Some said it more polite than others. In Carlisle, they call you potters. Dirty potters this, dirty potters that. On a rock of the shore is the cormorant's dwelling. The wild warbling blackbird has its nest in the tree. The birds of the air and the fish of the ocean Each has its own place But there's no place for me They seem to come almost from nowhere overnight. They're a bit like the starlings in Birmingham. They're here and they're making a mess. You're just a worker and move on. Your work's finished, you move. What are we to do with misfits? Some of them, I would say the maggots of society. They're just not, well, they just can't and be bothered to live like us. The fox has its lair and the rabbit its burrow. The sad for the badger, the high for the bee. The weasel, the hare, the mole, and the marten. Each has its own shelter. But there's no place for me. I was expecting one of my children, you know, one of my babies. And uh, my husband's son for the midwife. And in the time that there's gone after the midwife, the policeman come along. Come on, he says, get a move on. Shift on, he says, don't want you on here, on my beat. So my husband says, look, he says, sorry, he said, let me stay. He said, my wife is going to have a baby. No, I don't matter about that. He says, you get off. They made my husband move, and my baby was born going along, and my husband stayed in the road, and my baby was born on the crossroads in my caravan. The horse was in harness, and we was travelling along the road, and the policeman was following us behind, drumming us off, and the child was born, born on the crossroads. Born in the middle of the afternoon In a horse-drawn wagon on the old A5 The big twelve-wheeler shook me bed You can't stop here, the policeman said You'd better get born in some place else So move along, get along, move along, get along, go Move, shift Get that up, Mrs. and get the bleachers out of here. Born in the tatty left and time in an old bow tent near a tatty field. The farmer said, the work's all done, it's time that you was moving on. You'd better get born in some place else, so move along, get along, move along, get along, go. Move. Shift. You stay in a place, and they tell you to move on, and you don't move on, they'll, they'll summon you. They say, why don't you go back to your own county? Well, what county we got? We ain't got no county. 
Born on a common near a building site Where the ground is rutted with the trailer's wheels The local people said to me You'll lower the price of property You'd better get born in some place else So move along, get along, move along, get along, go Move, shift so we pulled in there and we were there about a week and they came back again, hounding us again. Move on, we don't want you here, move on. That's where we're going to go. He says, we don't give a damn where you go, he says, you've got to move on anyway. Wagon, tent or trailer born Last week, last year or in far off days Born here on a thousand miles away there's always men nearby who say You'd better get born in some place else So move along, get along, move along, get along, go Move, shift It was a wagon and horse and we were on the road when I was born We travelled from pillar to post Well I meant to say I've been doing it all my life for 15 years I suppose practically the beginning of civilization we've been travelers. The real thinkers far back, you know, that after the Battle of Culloden and after Glencoe, the people, so many of them being murdered in the houses by the English, that hundreds and hundreds of them fled to the lowlands of Scotland. Well, they had no home, they had no chattels or anything with them. And they started to live out dugouts, you know, or into caves. Well, they became nomads of the road. McPhee, Stuart, Mackenzie's, Maclean's, every name you can get, the remnants of the clans of long ago. Oh, Saviour travelled, yeah, didn't he, dear? Oh, Saviour travelled. He was born in a manger amongst the road. His mother carried him in a little donkey's back. If it goes by the way of the world to the Bible, we must keep up that generation to the last of the world. It was the first of it, it'll be the last of it. Born at the back of a blackthorn hedge when the white hoar frost lay all around. No eastern kings came bearing gifts instead. The order came to shift. You'd better get born in some place else, so move along, get along, move along, get along, go, move, shift. Our Lord travelled one time. The winter sky was hung with stars and one shone brighter than the rest. The wise men came, so stern and strict, and brought the order to evict. You'd better get born in some place else, so move along, get along, move along, get along, go. Move. Shift. It took them many years to get to this shore they believe, from India. But my father's teaching taught to me from his father, my grandfather, Wester, and therefore he would get it from his father, Tyso Boswell. And Tyso Boswell would get this information from his father again, which was Shadrach Boswell. If you refer to Genesis in the Bible, you will find... Abram and Sarai at that time. And they didn't bear any children, those two people. But Sarai had a maidservant. And the Lord told Abram to go in the tent with the maidservant. And she conceived, it says in the Bible, and there was a child. Now, eventually, Sarai became jealous of this girl and the baby and told Abram that she'd have to go. 
and of course she drove the servant and the child off. And you read further on that the Lord found her crying beside a well. And he put his hand on her head and told her to arise. And she would go into a far country and she would accumulate a family or a tribe. And they would deal in cattle and sheep. And they would be a despised race, but they would be a clever race. If you took a traveller and set him in the middle of a desert, he'd find a living there. You'd even sell that sand to the Egyptians. Jack of all trades. There's some that say that I'm a rogue, a gypsy, Jack of spades. A lousy, lazy tinker, but I'm really Jack of all trades. I travel up and down every corner of the nation, and I can always turn me into any occupation. I'm a roving Jack of all trades, of every trade and all trades. And if you want to know my name, they call me Jack of all trades. I've been a roving tinker with me back up on me shoulder Made pots and pans, I reeled up and with me and sniffs on me solar I can melt a chair or catch air or make a wicker table And when it comes to grinding knives, your noble is more able I'm a roving jack of all trades, of every trade and all trades And if you want to know my name, they call me jack of all trades He knows no bosses, no gaffers he could make a living out of the dirt of the man's feet. He could make money out of old rope. I've sold the baskets and the creels, the scrubbers made of heather. I've laboured in a thousand fields in every kind of weather. I've put the berries there at Blair and money a ton I've shifted. I've thinned the beets and shod the neeps of buck and tatties lifted. Agriculture working, making pigs, repairing umbrellas, fighting in a ring, horse dealing, chopping and changing, fruit picking, tater picking, harvesting, grinding, mat mending. Then he's a horse of bought and sold, stallion coat and brood mare. I trained him in the winter time and sold him at the horse fair. At Barnet and at Appleby, they knew me well in season. You'd always see me at Brough Hill, likewise at Kirby Stephen. I'm a roving jack of all trades, of every trade and all trades. And if you want to know me name, then call me Jack of all trades. In winter, when the days are short, us in the tin we're walking. Good baskets on our arms while we day a bit the hawking. We'd drink our wires and try to sell our wares and bits of laces. For every open door, the stain that shut hard in our faces. You go to the ladies' houses, big houses. You knock on the door and the lady comes out. Are you going to buy off the lucky gypsy today, my dear? Come and have your lucky hand read. Now I will tell you your past, present or future. You know, my dear, gypsies are like poets. They are born and not made. Come and have your lucky hand read. You'll find me on the building jobs wherever there's pick and shovel. I work behind the doors are clearing up the muck and rubble. You'll find me with the pile on gangs are on the steel erecting, crawling like a human fly and always death expecting. Well, I poured the first concrete in Hatfield New Town, that 13 story block, and I poured right up until the last beam. And summer I go round the farms and do the old pen spring And sometimes I'm down on me knees doing the ash belaying And when the summer days are past and winter comes the stealing You'll find me gathering junk and rags and working as drop dealing And I'm a useful man to the community I'm a roving jack of all trades, of every trade and all trades. And if you want to know my name, they call me jack of all trades. Don't I wish the old times had come back again? Where we used to go and have a drink at a public house, all come back on the old common, singing. Hang on our pots, great big salty puddings, ox of bacon, pig's eggs. We done nice then. With a good life. And I still like to like today. 
I'm a free-born man of the traveling people Got no fixed address with nomads, I am numbered Country lanes and byways were always my ways I never fancied being lumbered That dog seems to come on me after a certain time I like to move on Oh, we knew the woods, all the rest in places And the small birds sang when winter time was over Then we'd pack our load and be on the road They were good old times for a rover We had a gay old life, we was happy in the summertime Hawking the houses and going from door to door and having more tea and having more sing-song between the houses. Well done, girl, when you show good time. When you're going along the road and they say, we're going to a certain place to camp tonight, but you girls will stop behind and you'll hawk. And they would pull bunches of grass and leave it on the road. And you followed that grass to let you know that the way they went, you see. There was open ground where a man could linger Stay a week or two for time was not your master Then away you'd jog with your horse and dog Nice and easy, no need to go faster You see more, more life when you're travelling along the road because you go from one stopping place to another you see different people every day Look at the gabbers! Look at the gabbers in action! Tell you, Doris. There's lots of things you see, dear. We can talk. I bet you understand us. Oh, there's Mandy went to pull the grass all around the stuck to kite the gabbers off to Mandy to lay on me a prey. Ma said the rackly picking up the cobbles to like a dear old daddy say you can't go well. Well, all around the stuckers are stealing a bit of cash. The gabber said, what do you got? I had to put it down. We knew a good house from a bad, a shantier and a barrack here. Or if she wasn't in, they would say, the man who she's a bree the day for the cane will not get the slab. The woman's way today, we won't get our tea. Now and then you'd meet up with other travellers, hear the news or else swap family information. At the country fairs we'd be meeting there All the people of the travelling nation You're a terminal girl in. She's up at 40s. Well, Give me something decent, Dad. Ah, it's a oh. decent pony, though, that. Yeah. I'll take 36 quid for it. It was the assembly ground of the original gypsy people. They all met here once a year sure of meeting their friends and relatives at Buffalo Fair. It's, uh, it's stag time a year now, you know. Aye, but it's not a good time to sell a, a yearling, is it? <laughs> There's a bit of blood in that all there, somebody to look aye, at there, aye, isn't there? Aye, but you don't want them too bloody up in this high climate. Something that will live outside and live cheap. Something with a bit of constitution. Well, I'm never happy if I have too much blood about me. Well, I like something like half and half. Nothing much nearer than half and half in our country. Oh, I've kent life hard and I've kent it easy. And I've cursed the life when winter days was dawning. But I've danced and sang through the hail necht lang, seen the summer sunrise in the morning. 
Quite a lot of our people, they go back with the old stories, and they, they wouldn't walk down that wood there if it was dark at night in case they'd see a, a ghost or a banshee or something. Because round the firesides, the old people used to tell them stories. But we're standing as close as we're Alex sitting there. And I'm pushed bell up. They were up at this waist, big old place. They called it Barachalden. But Mary and her father that night when they were there, they'd all went to bed. They'd been sitting, killing away to the last hour, Mary said. But all on a sudden, she heard pipes coming. And she turned round and she said to her father, I'd advise, she says, his father, to put out the light. Because, she says, this is some of the drunk travellers coming for Oban. And she says, if you keep the lights on, you will be bothered to death that night and will never be able to rise in the morning. I never saw the likes of you, he says, Mary. Never in my life. Well, she says, when folks drunk, you don't want to be bothered with them. You can't be carrying on with your pipes all night. God will know give us the privilege of getting our eyes closed. So, our old feather obeyed, and he put out the light. Every one of them kept beautiful new tents of their own. But Mary, she heard the pipes coming nearer and nearer and nearer till they come walking right into the camp. And Mary said, with the water it she drained on the fire, the wind was just blown, just trying to make a coal light. Oh. But she says, I left at the side of the door, and I lock it out, Maggie. And as sure as God's in the kingdom of heaven, she says, I nearly jumped out of the bed. My heart went quicker, she says, and I trapped your engine. <laughs> there was two wee men. And there wouldn't be as tall, she says, as my Cairn Terrier. <laughs> we curled up shoes on them and picket bonnets, long whiskers on them, and the size of the red them, she says, was like just the length of your hand. Two sets of pipes, and they kept going in time round the fire and round the fire, one reel after another. And she says, I was even feared to blow breath. And they kept us walking, she says, to God sent the first streak of light in the morning before they disappeared. I've made willow creels and the heather besoms, lifted tatties, put the berries and gid hawking. And I've lain there spent, happed up in the tent, and I've listened to the old folks talking. You've got Boswells, you've got some Lees on this hill, there's the Smiths from Lancaster, and there's some Watnells on the hill, there's some Errands, some Pattersons, and some Youngs, Peterborough, Gaskins, Elliots, Lees, what we call the London Lees. And of course, when you get into Norfolk, around Norwich and East Durham and King's Lynn, you get a lot of the greys. And uh, further down, the Gumbles, Gaskins, the Lees, the Bucklers, Stuart, McKees, McAllisters, Johnsons, Williamsons. The were McKinseys and McFees, so neatly as they placed their knees, and walloped the tinsies at their ease around the moss of Baradale. Oh, some of them did gather rags, and some of them blew up their bags, and some of them no dealt in yags around the moss of Baradale. All you free-born men of the travelling people Every tinker, rolling stone and gypsy rover 
winds of change you blow in old ways ago in your traveling days will soon be home. I'd like to settle in the winter time Away from the weather in a country town But come the spring I'd get itchy feet Then goodbye town and smoky street I'd want to be moving someplace else So move along, get along, move along, get along, go Move, shift There's nothing beats the lovely heather and the moors and the birds Sunshine whistling and the clear burn and you're sitting Sunshine there and you've no coo, no care, as the Scotchman says. Well, it ain't a bad life in the summer. Well, I think about the winter, not the summer. I think about the winter. That's the terror time. No place to go nor doesn't know where to go. Doesn't know any place to go and sit. And it doesn't matter whether it's snowing or blowing, you've got to go. <laughs> there will the fade and the bracken will die. Stream will run cold and clear. And the small birds will be going And the stand you will be knowing That the terror time is near Where will you turn to? Where will you be? Know that the works are done But the farmer does not need ye And the council when I heed ye And the terror time has come And there was about three foot of snow. And would you believe, as I had to pull down that tent among that snow, and when I come for an the police office in after order, the horse feel fell. It. The horse it's fell down. Itself. And the two policemen come out with their fingers in their tunics like that and commenced to sneer and laugh. By word, I says, use pair of men as something to laugh at. Get that up, he says, and get the bleasers out of here. The woods give no shelter, the trees they're bare, snow falling all around, and the children they're crying, and the bed in which they're lying. Is frozen to the ground. The snow when I left, and the stove when I drove. There's ice in the water, John, in the mud and snow, your lotion. Trying to day a better washing and the kindling when I burn. Where would you rather be tonight? Sitting in a comfortable house, nice and clean, your children nice and clean. What's this life here? What's this life for children? Needing the warmest. Of your own human kind, you move near a town, 
button while the sight of you's opening for the police the soon are sending and you run the road again We never did travel much in the winter time. We always had pieces of ground that we always went to. Even in this country, there used to be greens left out. Like, we weren't going on private ground. None of the authorities ever bothered you. But nowadays, they're stopping all the camping grounds. Once you could pull in with your caravan To a sheltered spinny or to open ground But the law moved in with the barbed wire fence And they said that your camp was a prime offence And told you to shift and keep on going And move along, get along, move along, get along, go Move, shift My great-grandfather he looked at me one morning, we were sitting down, minding the horses we was. He said, my son, he said, years ago, when I was a boy, he said, see that place there, that park? I said, yes, grandfather. We used to stop on that, he said, 12 months, two years at the time. Till a lord came along, he said he put up with a fence up. And that's how they got the ground, he said, by pinching it, bit by bit. That's how you come your squires and your lords. They've no more right to that ground than what you and I are. The ground didn't belong to no one. Once you could settle for a week or two on a public common on a riverside. But the council chased us off the sights And they said, you people have no rights You'd better get moving someplace else So move along, get along, move along, get along, go Move, shift I think that you're endeavouring to defend something that is historically outdated the tinker and the wanderer. There may be places for them in some parts of the world, but there isn't in an industrialised urban community. The always are a-changing, you can e deny The day o' oh, the traveller is over There's no war to gang and there's no war to bide So farewell to the life o' oh, the rover Goodbye to the tent and the old caravan To the tinker, the gypsy, the travelling man And goodbye to the thirty-foot trailer Farewell to the cant and the treble and tongue, farewell to the Romany dog and the buying and selling, the old fortune telling, the knock on the door and the hawking. Goodbye to the tent and the old caravan, to the tinker, the gypsy, the travelling man, and goodbye to the thirty foot trailer. You've got to move fast to keep up with the times For these days a man can he donder There's a pile of to say you man be on your way And another to say you can't wander Goodbye to the tent and the old caravan To the tinker, the gypsy, the travelling man And goodbye to the thirty-foot trailer And this age, the atomic age where is the travel going to stand for making a living? Farewell to the bosoms o' heather and broom Farewell to the creel and the basket The folks o' today they would far sooner pay For a thing that's been made out o' plastic Goodbye to the tent and the old caravan To the tinker, the gypsy, the travelling man And goodbye to the thirty-foot trailer it's machinery for everything. 
I'm sure there's no much work you'll get now. So what the machine's in its place. Farewell to the pony, the cob and the mare. The reins and the harness are idle. You don't need the strap when you're breaking up scrap. So farewell to the bit and the bridle. Goodbye to the tent and the old caravan. To the tinker, the gypsy, the travelling man. And goodbye to the thirty-foot trailer. Farewell to the fields where we've sweated and toiled At Pooin and Sean and Leverton They'll soon hear machines and their travel and coins And their men folk had better be shifting Goodbye to the tent and the old caravan To the tinker, the gypsy, the travelling man And goodbye to the thirty-foot trailer These days are gone. Us people, we've changed in the last years. We're changing and we don't want to. They're in the majority, we're in the minority. They're gradually pushing us out. Every move we make, they find some way to get us out again on the move. Squad of the police chased us. That was up in the black country, Birmingham, I think they call it. The speed cops. We couldn't get leave to take our tea at the roadside. We were chased and they followed us along the road. And we were out to their district. Then another load of them come and chased us on to the next district. We were three days and three nights on the road to we come to Newcastle upon Tyne. Tourists, you can get in. Gypsies, out you go, come on. Get away, gypsies. We don't want you here. Why don't you go back to your own county? You think to get up and get away out of that. Come on, get up. Get a move on. I mean, we're fed up with gypsies living in our area. We're sick to death of them. Vagrants. Filthy, dirty people. I object to calling them gypsies. Nothing but lazy people. Uh, I would say the, the gypsy was a gentleman. These people are not. Oh, the gypsy is a gentleman and he always knows his place. He never troubles anyone and rarely shows his face. He knows the ways of nature, he's reticent and shy, and never pesters gorgios to sell or yet to buy. And the wind is on the heath, and the heath is far away, from towns and private property where decent people stay. Oh, the gypsy is a gentleman and he always tips his hat. His face is weather beaten and he wears a red cravat. He wanders through the forest adding to his gypsy lore. Or he's leafing through Levengro and he's never ever poor. And the wind is on the heath and the heath is far away. From towns and private property where decent people stay. Oh, the gypsy is a gentleman, give credit where it's due. He never parks his caravan where it can spoil the view. And if you find a pony grazing in your garden plot, don't blame the noble gypsy, but that awful tinker lot. Pat and JF, they were sitting in the mound and they heard the scrunching outside. And they didn't know what it was. They both sat still in their seat. When they opened up the curtains at the French windows, there was a horse looking in the window at them. Oh, the gypsy is a gentleman, he keeps well out of sight. His caravan is picturesque, it's colourful and bright. He's full of ancient wisdom and of which he has great store. Not like those thieving ditties who come knocking on the door. And the wind is on the heath, and the heath is far away. From towns and private property where decent people stay. People think of gypsies round campfires with a scarf round a head, 
playing a violin and a pretty dark head bit dancing, you know, but if they've got to come in contact with it. Oh, the gypsy is a gentleman and he plays the violin and tinkers and hedge mumpers, they are not of his kin. When you smell the smell of wood smoke and the hedgehog in the pot, you'll find him carving of J. Dart. Not like that other lot. And the wind is on the heath, and the heath is far away from towns and private property where decent people stay. People get the impression, oh, these gypsies, the rogues, the thieves, they'll steal your hens, they'll steal this and steal the next thing. Don't go to the door, they'll put a cuss on you that they can read fortunes, all this. It's wonderful, my friend. They say we leave litter and mess up the land We're the dirty traveling people But who laid the blight on each mill and factory site? Was it us or the Gorgio people? I think it's disgusting that they live the way they do, but they've chosen that life. If they hadn't chosen it, would they go about so filthy and dirty? They say we're a menace to the health of the land. The unhealthy traveling people. But who poisoned the air and the rivers everywhere? Was it us or the Gorgio people? I was down there with the town clerk last Tuesday, and the conditions are really absolutely deplorable. They say we're dishonest, not worthy of trust. The thieving, traveling people. But who kills for gain, who robs banks and holds up trains? Is it us or the Gorgio people? We're supposed to steal other people's children. Gypsies have got too much children that own it. Steal anybody else's. They say we are quarrelsome, given to blows, the violent, travelling people. But who starts the wars, breaks the first of human laws? Is it us or the Gorgio people? I'm not against them living the way they do, but I just don't think they should be allowed to live the way they are. So close to civilization. They say we are backward, retarded, and dull. The ignorant, traveling people. But who judges and condemns men who are different to them? Why, you do the Gorgio. People. Their honesty is suspect, to put it mildly. They're dirty. Their, their children are dirty. Many of the children can hardly talk in English. It's a most peculiar dialect. They can't read or write. I'd like to read and write. I'd like to go to learn in school, you know, but through the winter and all the snow on the ground, you've like got a month in school. And then you were taken out and you were moved along, you know, to another camp. Well, what you got in one school, you lost it all going to the next school. All I ever learned in school was to read and write my name. And my little brother and sister, they're not much better than myself, you know. But I suppose a few months in some other school, maybe I'll learn them something. Come on, wake up. Page nine. Right, now you start, Sheila. She lived all alone in a house in the woods. Close by lived a sly old... 
When they did come to us, we found them that in school they were very, very timorous indeed and gave the impression that they were in need of a, a great deal of protection from the ordinary child in the school. They send you to school and every playtime when you finish your lessons I wasn't a scholar, I was a fighting man at school. My brother Joss was. He had to defend the young ones, I had to defend the younger ones. At every school, there was a cock. The cock of the school, he had to be beat, the gypsy boy. <laughs> tinky, tinky, tinker, what was you born? In the magnet that is where your big sort done. Tinky, tinky, tinker, where your keel and your leaks. Your mammy's getting a hocking in your feathers, breeks. <laughs> tinky. Darky John, Tinky John. I've got that steady all the time at school. Just run away, throwing stones at you. Way home to your Tinky Mommy. Way home. What's on the Tinky Buddies? What's on the Tinky Buddies? What's on the Tinky Buddies? Marching through the Brumbilla. Some of them are fruits and stockings. Some of them are Ninata. Some of them are friends and parents. Marching through the Brumbilla. That brother of mine was kept seven years in one class. Well, my mother went to the teacher and asked why my brother wasn't able even to sign his own name. And the teacher, she says, oh, she says, I would never dream of learning that laddie or anything. She says, he's the best message laddie I have in the school. She sent him messages here, messages there, messages for this teacher, clean the blackboard, sweep the floor. And to this day, he can't sign his own name. My mother said, I never And after that, you go back in school and you're full. You feel that you could murder somebody or other person with some feeling. And you feel so much that you want to cry all day and you don't learn anything. Or you want to go and you half kill some of the children that's around you because you go mad altogether. You're asking me what I've got to keep up. I ask myself, what am I fighting to keep down? isn't he? This, you know, my mother said, you shouldn't play with gypsies. <laughs> what the hell do they know about them? I mean, it's not only ignorant mums and ignorant dads, but it is also ignorant governments. I mean, if it is the layman in the street that is persecuting them, surely the government could step in and stop it. They're not all ignorant in Parliament, surely. Majority of them, maybe, but not all of them. It starts off when you go to school, you seem to be frightened of something. There's always somebody seems to be chasing you. My mother said I never should play with the gypsies in the wood. My mother said I never should play with the gypsies. We're sick of it. We're hounding it the same as Hitler hounded the Jews. In some parts of Perthshire, they would think more of a dumb animal, a beast in the field, a cattle beast, as they do of a tinker. You know, because we're gypsies, is there any harm of us going in a beer shop getting served with a pint of beer? And near enough every beer shop, no gypsies are allowed. Dog's life. It is. Proper dog's life. Some houses you would go to would put the dog if they saw you coming, before ever they heard what you wanted. Some people chase you away as if you were an animal. Just 
treat you as if you were animals, as if you had seven lives. And it was just opposite the doctor's house there. So they take him into the doctor. But the doctor wouldn't hear a word of him getting inside his surgery. He was a tinker and he had to go to the garage. So they took my father and stretched him out on the garage floor. It was an awful cold day. And he says, oh, he says, this man's dead. The doctor says, I can't do nothing for him. My mother was standing there greeting for me in her arms. He was just tinker Donald McGregor. And that was the end of it. Tinky, tinky, tinker, where was you born? In the mango tatties where your beaks are torn. Tinker, oh, tinker, cover your face. You're no a paid a member of the human race. We're classed like the deep south in America. We're just black men. When they see me coming, they shut the door. We're pinned in. Do you mean to tell me that you wouldn't be better off in prison? I've seen them clash the door in my face. And the near had your clothes clashed in the way you were standing. It makes me feel very deeply that anybody should be treated the way I am. The other girls was older than me and they would say, Danny Bing the Habin, it's the Juggles cheat, Juggles dog. This mean don't take that food. I thought you were starving of hunger because that looks very like the dog's dish. Do you mean to tell me that dying class and us just pigs? You drop dead in England for a can of water, and they wouldn't give it to you. A dog's life. More or less, it's like prison, our life. We've got to be in for a certain time at night. If we're on that road eight hours at night, and if the police sees you on the road, they get you in the car and they'll hold you in there. Because when I see a car coming up the road, I jump in the edge so they don't see me. You've got to do it because they say you ain't out for doing no good this time of night. Especially if they know you're a gypsy. Gypsy, gypsy, live in a tent, can't afford to pay the rent. And there will be no different. They will always be down on us, and people will always pick on us. Always will. The poor tinker people, whenever they heard the police was to come, they were up and away, whether it was wet or dry. Every time we pull off on the side of the road, we've got the police coming here to shift us on. So where can we go and what can we do? Where are we going to go? Summoned us every morning. They want you to move at 11 o'clock at night. And they're there at 7 o'clock in the morning to see me on the road. The police was waiting at the caravan door for me for summons. Every morning. Say, all you potters is our troublemakers. We're sick of you. If you were to see yourself, you'd say, Well, I wouldn't have that life and no money. There were a lady, a gypsy woman, and she was pregnant. And she was in labour pain. And she went to four or five doors to see where she's get a drink. She had her basket with her, like you know, and her wears in it. And she was in Doncaster. And she crossed over to the other street, went to about 20 doors. And do you know that not one of them people would give her a drink of water? In labour pain, and they wouldn't give her a drink. She was carried off the street to the hospital. That's the God's truth. And it was her first baby. Wa saw the tinker buddies, wa saw them gonna wa. Wa saw the tinker buddies, gypsies, travelers, and uh, some of them were gasted, Belson, 
Sam at Buchan, vaulted for Heather's Kent, the Auschwitz ovens, men and women, bairns and all. My mother said, I never should play with the gypsies. The people treat us like dogs. They think we're nothing but dogs. And to tell you the truth, I, I think of them as dogs. Can't see no way out. Plus, if we was in houses, perhaps they might treat us more better. Dark the night, the winds of change. So sharp and keen to blow The cock it crows with iron throat It says that we must go It says that we must go The hun Hunters follow hard behind The hounds, they make their din The woods are gone that sheltered us And none will let us in And none will let us in You live a different life and people I think have so much trouble understanding someone who lives differently to the way they do. They're just not, well, they just can't be bothered to live like us. The hard-eyed men who guard the road, they bid us choose our way, and yet they will not let us go. Nor will they let us stay Nor will they let us stay These folk will exist till the end of time And they'll never ever change their ways And you'll never get rid of tinkers They'll be there to doomsday in the afternoon Five hundred years of timeless days We wandered through the land But now the guardians of the clocks Have said our race is damned They say our race is damned How far does it come in your mind before you say, I have done everything I possibly can, and I will help the broad mass of these people, but there are some I can do nothing with whatever? Then doesn't the time arise in one's mind when one has to say, all right, one has to exterminate the impossibles. I know all that leads to in one's mind, Nazism, who is it next, the gypsies, the tinkers, the Jews, the coloured man. I don't accept that really on these particular people. I don't people. think exterminates are terrible. You can't really mean that. Why not? <laughs> 